Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to the shop. Today we got the motor back, the Yamaha 30. We got it back from the machine shop. We had to bore it 30 thousandths over because of the cylinder wall damage that it had sustained prior to us getting it. I'll just show you where we're at on it right now and here's where we're at. First thing I've done is gone through here and cleaned all the parts up. Everything's ready to go back together. Cleaned all the nuts and the bolts, got them all separated. All the electronics, the flywheel, the intake, and more of the intake, the oil assembly, oil pump assembly, and whatnot. Here's the crank. And those are the old pistons. And do get you the service manual. Get a Yamaha service manual. Build it right. I'll torque everything correct. Put all the nuts and bolts back like they should be. All the tolerances. Shows you how to set the timing. Here's the block. It's been bored 30 over. All three holes got punched. And here's the old rotating assembly. What we have to do is take the old pistons off. We've got to push the old wrist pins out. And there's needle bearings inside up in here. I don't know if you can really see them. But we gotta make a special tool for that and I'll show you how to do it to reset those wrist pin bearings. They're not in a roller cage, they're actual needle bearings. There's 28 of them. And when you pull their uh, wrist pin out, they all fall out. And that's why I have a plate. Put the piston over the plate. All your wrist pins fall down, your bearings fall in there and you catch them. Here's the new pistons. These are Wisecos. Uh, actually, in my opinion, is a way better quality of piston over factory. Um, it is a two ring piston. It's coated on top. And uh, the shot was telling me that all three pistons were within one gram of each other. So that just tells me there that uh, Wiseco pays really good co close attention to their product. Anyhow, let's get started on this crank assembly. All right, so what we're gonna do is, is I've already removed one of the keepers out of the wrist pin, and I've pushed it from this side with needle nose pliers this away, and I'm gonna grab it. Now I'm not re reusing these wrist pins, so I'm gonna grab them with a uh, needle nose pliers and twist and pull. And when I do this, all the needle bearings are gonna drop out. And there they are. There's your piston, there's your wrist pin, there's your keepers. And if you look, all the needle bearings are right there. Should be 28 of them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reinstall with a new piston comes a, a new wrist pin replaces the old one so we're going to take the rest of these apart and then we're going to reinstall the new piston and there is a certain way these pistons go that usually says up on top of them and when they say up that means this piston will face the tapered end of the crankshaft that means your wrist pin will go in such like this so i don't know if you can see it but it says up that's going to face upward to the tapered end of the crankshaft. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a special tool for right here for all these wrist pin bearings to go back in. This is the old wrist pin right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut a piece out, an old piece. And I'm gonna take this piece that I cut and I'm gonna put it back in here and put all the needle bearings back in. That way all the needle bearings will stay in place. So when I take the piston and I go to reinstall it, I can use the old piece of the puck of the wrist pin that's holding the needle bearing, leave it in there, and then take the new wrist pin and push it in and let it push through the needle bearings and push the puck out the other side. That way the needle bearings will never fall out. It's just a little tool I can make just to make this job easier. Okay, here's the puck that I made. All I did is I cut the old wrist pin. I just, I, ow, dang, that thing's hot. I just cut it. Anyway, I cut it with that DI grinder over there. 
and I want to insert it in here and then we'll put these other loose roller bearings back in the top and that'll hold those guys in place for me so when I put the piston in and slide the new wrist pin in those guys won't fall out okay so he's in there now I'm gonna gently put these other loose roller bearings in just like that So far, it's working really good. Okay, one more bearing, roller bearing. And just like that, they're all in there. Now, when I put this piston over the top and push the new wrist pin in, these guys won't fall out. Okay, one thing that I've already installed in the new piston is this wrist pin keeper right here. It's really hard to show you. I don't really have a good camera angle to show you how to do it. The way I start them is I put one groove in and I always use the chamfer right here. That is used so you don't scratch the piston. Squeeze this in down in that, in that, in that notch and then work it around with like a small pick till it snaps in. One thing you want to remember that's very important on a two stroke is the opening. This guy right here, you do not want the opening of the clip to be right here where the chamfer's cut in the piston. That guy can work its way out and that'll be catastrophic image damage. You want the, the pin, the opening to be 180 degrees away You want the opening of the clip to be right here, opposite side. All I did was I put it in and I rolled it around. Now we're ready to set it, the piston on the, uh, the rod and we'll run our wrist pin through. All right, so now I'm gonna put the roller bearing retainers in. These are just like a little bush and there's two of them. There's one on this side and one on this side. That looks really good. And I use assembly lube from Permatex. It's really sticky and it holds all those little small pieces together. The other thing is we'll wipe down our new wrist pin here. And we're gonna attempt to slide all this through without dropping any of those needle bearings. If my little puck worked right, then we should be able to get it out. But I just realized that um, I'm going to have to take this keeper back out of this piston in order to push that puck all the way through and get it out. I just realized that. Okay, I removed the keeper out of the piston and it says up. I don't know if you can see it, but the up faces the tapered part of the crankshaft. Let's see if we can get this go together. And I don't know if you can see it really. I've got the pin in, the new one. And here's the old one coming out. And it worked. So none of the needle bearings in here fell out. They're all in there like they should be. Our little tool, it worked. Now we'll put our keepers back in, and that'll be this piston to be done. Now I'm not going to show the rest of the two how I do them. It's going to be exactly how I did the first one. And then when we get done with this, we'll check our bearings, put our new O-rings and seals in. I'll show you that. And then we'll set the piston and rotating assembly back in the block. All right, we got the three new pistons installed, the pins. I put the rings on the first two pistons. I did check them. 
Uh, I did check the ring gap in the bore of the piston in the cylinder, and we were uh, nine thousandths. The book says between seven and sixteen thousandths clearance, and we're at nine thousandths. That's what they bored them to. If you look at the ring, there's usually some writing on the top. I don't know if you can see it or not. What that means, that faces up. I mean, it's just gonna face like this towards the top of the piston, not towards the downward, upward. That's on all, typically most of your rings. And these are tapered rings, which are nice. Uh, really good for high compression applications. As the compression builds in the cylinder, it pushes these rings towards outer, towards the cylinder wall, which uh, make them seal really good. There's little gaps in them right there. If you see them, what those are for, if you look, there's a pin right there on the piston and that gap will line up just like that when it's installed, just like it is right here on this piston. And what that does is that keeps these rings from rotating around and turning and um, keeps them where they should be indexed properly on the uh, piston itself. Okay, well, I'm gonna put these last set of rings on. Um, then I'm gonna lube the pistons up and lube the cylinder walls up with some uh, Permatex Ultra Slick. And then we're gonna try and install this rotating assembly back in this block. Also, I wanna just note that I have changed the seal here in the O-ring on this upper bearing. And these bearings here in the crank feel good. If you look, there's pins on here. Those are anti-rotating pins. And what they do is in the block, they'll go in these little chamfers here and here and down here in the very end the bigger one right here this would be the top he'll go in that hole right there what that does is keeps his outer bearing race from turning in the block you don't want the bearing to turn in the block you want the outer race to stay steady and you don't want the bearing to spin in the block if it does that it'll ruin the block the oil injection ring looks good i know they say replace them but this was brass we got lucky it's not plastic and it looked good all the way around so I'm gonna off these uh, pistons and the cylinders. I'm gonna try and shove them in the hole and see how it goes. Just like that. I'm gonna make sure our pins in the right spot. There's a washer. Goes down just like that. Perfect. So then we'll take and roll our uh, dowels around, lines up there, he lines up right, right here, fits in there. Right there, right there, and right there there all right and that's all there is to setting the rotating assembly in the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the back of the crankcase we're going to clean this up and this is a doesn't have a gasket it has a rtv uh, like an ultra gray a um, gasket maker if you look in the manual it'll tell you, you use a gasket maker along the way so We'll clean all this up and then we'll set the back of the motor on. All right, now that we got the rotating assembly in, we got our bearings right where they should be. The mating surfaces are all clean. We got our uh, thrust washer in. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we put gasket maker on here. That's what the book says to make use. There's not actual gasket. It's okay if you put a liberal amount. Don't get crazy on it, but 
make sure you're not gonna have any gaps in your sealant. That way you won't have an air leak. If you get an air leak between the blocks and the halves, you're gonna have problems with the uh, idling, you leaning conditions. But uh, anyway, our bearing, our O-ring bearing is in here. We got our pins. We'll go ahead and install it. Just like that. And the next thing we'll do is we'll get our bolts and uh, we'll put them in and then we'll torque them down to the uh, predetermined torque spec. I believe in the book, the outer ones are uh, 15 foot pounds and the inners are 28 foot pounds. All right. All right, guys, we got the uh, intake, the back of the block put on. We got the uh, M8 bolts in, the M6 is put in. We got these torqued down to 20 foot pounds and these are down to 11 foot pounds. Uh, good thing is everything rolls still nice and smooth. We're gonna stop here in this video. We're gonna let this gasket maker dry. And on the next video, we're gonna put the uh, ignition back on and then we'll roll it up and I'll show you how to set the timing with a dial indicator. But until next time, thanks for watching.